Coming at you live, it's Sunday Stories. 911, what's your emergency? And the mayhem began. Today, Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador defended the decision to retreat. Every 14 minutes, there's a knife crime across England and Wales. While this story is concerned, Mark, we are left with a lot of unanswered questions here. The Mexican state of Sinaloa erupted into violence Thursday. Welcome back to another episode of Sunday Stories. With me, your host, Farim Shinzade and Benjamin Fezic. And in this episode, we will talk about crime. To be more specific, crime in Sweden. Can you give me some perspective of what's going on right now? Give us the news give us the latest headlines and let's just cut into it well first off it's popping off time there is bombs going off every day almost feels like it last week you had three explosions all over sweden you had one in southern sweden one in the middle of sweden one in stockholm large one in stockholm and it's all gang rivals and gangs bombing each other for police protection for power for money and uh, yeah it's starting to look like baghdad over here like they classify it as a, a criminal act right which is it is right but they don't classify it as a terrorist act right which is pretty weird because like what is the difference between a terrorist that you know pops a bomb well, by definition, the terrorist is doing this because of a political statement, or he's doing it to terrorize you into doing something. Right. Uh, these bombings have been more of a criminal versus criminal element. Yeah. So they have more to do with uh, property destruction and just intimidating the targets. And uh, well, uh, like a funny thing or funny thing that I found interesting was. There's no casualties. No one's dying in these bombs. There's been about 120 bombings in Sweden That's crazy. last year. No casualties. You think they yeah, plan think. to not have casualties? Yeah, I think they do. I think they're, uh, someone's very close by or someone's monitoring this, doing a stakeout, finding out when people are not around, finding out where to put it. Because right. uh, I feel like if you weren't going to do it in the 120 bombings, You'd have someone walk by. You'd have some casualty, but uh, so far they've uh, they've not had that. So it's a. Uh, but <clears throat> it's I don't know if it's a coincidence or if it's well planned. But I mean, this is actually like buildings where people live in. Yeah. So it's very unlikely that you will have someone injured. Yeah. Um, but I think it, it was uh, like the latest news of the bombing in a. Um, in a family house area yeah. it was something about like revenge uh for the non-surrender gang which is an mc ch gang right yeah yeah uh, they they caught a guy from bandidos right. uh, another mc gang uh that was caught in the vicinity of the area and uh well obviously he's not talking uh no one's talking and uh but i think a lot of signs point to it being the internal gang conflict between the gangs uh, because the one that was in uh, Stockholm earlier this week uh, was known as a trap house. Uh, they were selling drugs. They were selling uh, the guns. They were selling a lot of stuff from this house. It was uh, a good area too, right? Yeah, it was a yeah. it was a rich. Uh, it was a they were supplying the rich people of uh, Stockholm. Uh, they just uh, in the newspapers they describe it as a drug central. Shit. So people were coming in, coming out, just wow. buying and coming out. That's a shift, like, in the society because a couple of years ago, like, let's say, like, 10 years ago, you had this bad neighborhoods where usually the drug dealers were going on. Yeah. Now they're moving into the good areas. You don't have a central headquarter for, for this kind of activity, right? No, that but that's the whole thing that they want to have you feel like. So it's not centralized. They want to feel like it's decentralized so that if you catch one of them or you catch one part of the group, you're not going to shut down the whole operation. It's a nationwide operation. Right. Uh, that's why you see gangs like Hells Angels, Bandidos, uh, No Surrender, and actually making it. Yeah. Because they have affiliations all over Sweden, all over Europe. They're uh, sure. all over the world. Um, 
Yeah. And their main income is, is actually the drug trade. Yeah, they have uh, income of drug trade. They have income of uh, extortion. They have a lot of money coming in from uh, gun trades. They have, in, I'm sure they have a lot of uh, legal assets as well, uh, mechanic shops. They have a lot of... Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like, they have yeah. to launder the money somehow yeah. to get it clean. <clears throat> there was also like some facts shown that all of these explosions was um, actually explosion used in like construction areas. Oh. Now they start to investigate if maybe the construction companies do they handle the explosives or you know if if explosives get missing yeah do they just you know yeah, who's responsible if exactly fifty kilos of dynamite goes missing yeah but I feel like that that should be like your main priority if, right? if you're a boss yeah. you're like two bombs were missing where is it <laughs> ah we're just gonna yeah. take it off the list yeah also two bombs went off in Stockholm I don't know any affiliation exactly so um. Yeah, but criminal cr- criminal gangs are getting more sophisticated. Yeah. Um, it must be very hard for cops to to yeah. Take police, down. they uh, police, they actually started a new operation uh, last November. They started uh, Operation Rim Frost. Whoa, it sounds cool though. It sounds cool. It sounds like a movie, right? It sounds like a James Bond. Yeah, Operation Rim Frost. Right. Right. Uh, but it's actually just the cops <laughs> <laughs> going down on uh, cracking down on organized crime. Cracking down on gangs, trying to stop uh, drugs, trying to stop uh, weapons and uh, bombs. Shit. So uh, thus far, uh, Operation Rimfrost had a. Uh, they've been uh, quite successful, actually. They've catched a lot of people, and they plan on do continuing Operation Rimfrost for about six months. And they started with they wanted to. Originally, it was supposed to just be in Malma because they have a very. Oh, big that's a big yeah, center. They have a big. Uh, they have a big gang problem and. Uh, but seeing as it was so successful down there, they've expanded it to Stockholm, and now Westeros is also gonna uh, wow. Operation Rimfrost is gonna reach Westeros. Damn. Yeah. But <clears throat> does the operation have like a unique kind of touch to to fighting crime? Like, uh, well, I think it's just because they're focused on finding the big guys, right. the big fish who's yeah. out there. They don't really care about drug buyers. They don't really care about. Uh, people affiliated with them, they just want to climb the ladder, get, right. get the people at the top, and then try to stop the network. Um, hmm. Because right now, it's out of control. It you is. You have uh, so many gangs. How many can we just drop off the bike? We got Hells Angels, Bandidos, No Surrender, X-Team, uh, Shot Kurdish Boss, Mafia. Kurdish Mafia. Yeah. You have uh, Serbian Mafia. You have Russian Mafia, Swedish Mafia. They Every were, nationality they got did their quit. own. They did turn into a house band, though, for a small <laughs> while, but Swedish House Mafia, they were still out. For a political side of it, uh, this is like the best time for for radical parties to right. to to gain from this, yeah. right? Right. So you have one force, like no. the political side, the radical political side, which maybe does not want to solve this problem fully, you know? All right, the radicals, especially the right radicals, that's uh, currently gaining the most out of it, not solving. Because it really seems like the government's ineffective, not doing their job, and it looks poorly on them. Yeah. Uh, currently, Stefan Levin is taking a lot of heat because there is so much going on. Uh, the big question is, would it have been different if Ulf Christensen would have been in charge? I don't know. Would it have been different if Jimmy Orkeson would have been in charge? I think that we would have the same... But I feel like when we came to Sweden, it was around like uh, 2002 or something like that. It was some crime going on, but it wasn't all over Sweden. You right. had some parts of right. it. Yeah. But today, you, you can't even go outside feeling like I am safe or I, I can't have cash on me because there's a risk of getting yeah. robbed. It's it's changing. It's yeah. changing. Yeah. It's a uh, society, I feel like, is changing because these criminals are getting more money, mainly from the drug trade, but they're launching more money. So... Let's say the guy, when you guys came in 2002, uh, well, what the Swedish El Chapo, he was just starting out. So what was he making? Sure. A couple of thousand, a couple of thousand. But he's been picking up. He's been working for 18 years, starting a, starting a gang, growing affiliates, uh, buying legal businesses, laundering money, moving up, moving up. And now all of a sudden they have uh, massive gangs everywhere. That's yeah. recruiting a lot of these young people. That's, uh, they, you know, because I feel like, my theory is there's a lot of 
negativity in schools on results. There's a lot of competition for these yeah. uh, spots, universities, where you're going to go. That's a good point. Uh, and when, as a kid, we've all been kids. We've all been broke-ass kids. What you, what, first thing you want to have when, you have when you're a kid, you want to have money. You want to get the Gucci bag. You want to get the clothes. You yeah. want to get everything. You want to get the status. You want to get uh, people's respect. True. You don't really get that when you're a kid. True. But if you move into crime, you will get... Uh, pretty fast. You will pretty fast get a lot of money, get a lot of... Uh, That's true, actually. Because the hip-hop scene has... I wouldn't say like the center of crime, but it has been associated with crime for a long time. Yeah. And today's rappers, like, for example, the trap music, it, it's... Yeah, exactly. But just the, the like I said earlier, uh, Trap House is a house that sells drugs. So right there, the trap music is where they, you know people selling drugs music. Yeah, yeah, true. And, uh, and they I don't want to hate. I am a fan of trap music, but I will say it is a lot of crime going on in those songs. It is. It uh, is. And they 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 promote like the, this kind of things. You know, I right. have this much money. Yeah. I have Gucci. Yeah. And of they course, do, people want to have it. Yeah, they do promote the. Uh, Almost a gang mentality, uh, mentality of crime being cool, and uh, I see a lot of young people associating with that. I see a lot of young people like resonating in their mind that yeah, it is cool. It is uh, you know, if all your friends are doing it, all your friends are hustling on the side, they're all making money this way. No one's knowing about it. The parents don't know about it, and then all your friends want to be like, hey, let's just join up. Well, you know, we'll start doing true. it together. That's true. And we'll never surrender. No, that's true. No surrender. No surrender. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. And then you have now, now but now it's escalated so far that they have these murder for hire kids. Whoa. You know, kids that you just. And it's kids. Yeah, man. it's 50, it's 14, 15 year olds' kids. Just, uh, they give them a gun and they tell them, you know, you get 40,000, 50,000, you shoot this person. And of course, if you're broke, I mean, uh, and your parents, maybe maybe your dad uh, yeah, drives a taxi, maybe yeah. two, 20,000 a month yeah, maximum, yeah. you're going to take it. Yeah, your mom's staying at home. Yeah. Staying at, you know, they want to make it cool that they're. They don't care about the law. They don't care about that because they have their own rules, rules of conduct. They have their own gang. That they, they only care about the gang's respect. They only care about right. their friends or something like that. And I see the appeal of it because it's very uh, short-term, like, gain. Get cash now. Get the bitches now. Of you course. Know, ain't nobody course. getting bitches in two weeks. Yeah. They're getting bitches now. True. And, True. Uh, yeah, I see it uh, resonating a lot of young people because I don't see them... Because now the whole pitch that we give the kids now is like, okay, stay in school. And then stay in school for another five years. And then yeah. stay in school for another five years. And then in 13 years of school, maybe you'll get a job. And then after those jobs, maybe 10, 15 years, you'll have enough money. You'll buy a house. Exactly. And then you know, get a mortgage. Right, get a mortgage. And you get your kids, do yeah. the home, whole thing. And I don't think that resonates with a lot of millennials and a lot of young people. No. That's... Uh, well, we, we've been listening to this music all all our lives. Yeah. Hearing about, uh, you know, get the bread, get the strap, yeah. get, you know, get it. But it was different. Like, I mean, if we go back to like Tupac and Biggie yeah. and all of, I mean, even Jay-Z, those kind of artists was, you know, they was promoting some kind of different life. You know, they were yeah. maybe rapping about their mothers, yeah. uh, about their wives yeah. or how tough it was, you yeah. know. But these days, it's not like how tough it is. It's like how good it is. Yeah. And there you have the switch, right? Yeah. I feel like glorifying drug use. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like we have the now famous line Tupac dropped, smoke weed every day. Yeah. He was smoking weed. You know, that, that, was, the, that was the main selling point of his songs. Now it's cooking up, cooking up dope with the Uzi. Now it's like cocaine. They use heavy drugs and uh, Molly Percocet. Molly Percocet. Sure, it's true. And there's a lot of heavy narcotics. There's a lot of uh, glorifying drug use and how fucked up you can get from these drugs. We have this one side, you know, all of these gangs that are like very well funded. Right. And then we have the political side, which is like has to put up the regulations yeah. and fight the crime. Yeah. And then the suppliers of these drugs, which yeah. is the cartels. Yeah. Can you tell us something about the cartels? Like how, how do they involve in this kind of age? How do they involve yeah, well, in Well, let's say you have uh, 
we don't have to just talk about the cartel. This is just international uh, crime syndicates, how they have produce, uh, production. They have production in uh, third world countries. They have production where uh, officials are easy to bribe, where the police is going to look the other way. Uh, if you're going to try and have a huge um, meta- methamphetamine lab, it's not going to work in Sweden. Obviously, yeah, one yeah, cop true. sees it and bam, he has yeah. to report it. But down in Colombia or uh, Ecuador or El Salvador or Mexico, yeah. uh, there's a lot of e- th- 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 they have a lot lower income, and the criminals they make s- the crime syndicates they make so much money that they can pay a police officer a year salary yeah. just to look away. Just don't do your job, and we'll give you a year salary. Of course, you're gonna look away. Yeah, because if you don't look away, <coughs> we'll kid kill your family. And exactly. You, you know, if no money, and then you're dead. <laughs> right. Or maximum money, and you don't even have to do your job. All you gotta do is stay in your car, listen to the radio. Like now, we're just talking about South America, but this applies to pretty much everywhere where it's uh, low income, uh, like North Philippines, Africa, right. Southeast Asia, um, Eastern Europe. Yeah, you right. have a lot of uh, production sites in Poland and Czechoslovakia, Moldova. No that, one feels th- like, that feels like a country that has no control of Moldova, right? Be- right? Like because if you have no resources, yeah. you have no economic leeway, these crime syndicates, they have an easier time of rooting themselves, uh, finding people that's going to look away, finding people that's going to help them because they have so much money because they, they take money like that no pretty much no other corporation does they take money from the rich countries and then reinvest them sure into <coughs> crime <coughs> but they reinvest them in the country uh in these poorer countries and that resonates in the poorer countries yeah. because they want to have keep having income yeah. same thing with like mexico they produce a, a lot of the drugs that the united states make you know all of the cocaine all of mm. the methamphetamine all of the well, not all of the marijuana, but some of the marijuana. Some of the um, and then they just transport over the border, and it changes from making $5 in Mexico to making $500 in America. So That's a boost. That is a 100 uh, times increase in Shit. profit. No. And all you have to do is move the products 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, and then you get that big of an increase. <coughs> and uh, if you, like, you want to, like, you, when you mentioned it was three parts, uh, you had the political side, you had the suppliers, and then you have the the gangs, like the gangs yeah. and the small. And I want to talk about the gangs and how they, because the gangs, especially in Sweden, they sell narcotics and they make a lot of fucking money. True. They have incomes of fifty million crowns almost yearly. These big gangs, and you cannot compete with this. On a local level, how is one cop going to stop 50 million crowns worth of product getting sold? You may catch one guy, yeah. but you're not going to sell 50 million crowns worth of product through one guy. You're going to have 50 guys, 70 guys out there working, hustling their asses off. And you catch one, that's not going to stop the whole flow. You're going to keep going. You're going to keep going. And because they're making so much money, they can keep recruiting these new kids you know, you give them a cash up front, 40000 Start selling for me. Or you start doing this yeah. for me. <coughs> of course they'll take it. They're making, what, 1000 crowns a month if their parents give it to them? Of course they're going to take it. And they're going to sell it because there's always going to be a supply and demand for drugs. There's always going to be going to be people that want it. And there's always going to be p- people that sell it. Same thing with America in 1930s. They banned alcohol. Right. What happened? Al Capone. Yeah, Al Capone. You, Al was Capone. A you had bloodbath. Yeah, they had Chicago. They multiple gang wars, and then they took it out, the ban on alcohol. Al Capone was sent to Alcatraz, and then oh, now there's not there's not too much alcohol related. Yeah. You know, sure, there's some guys selling alcohol out of their cars, but that's not a big not Al Capone anymore. But then when they have the same problem with El Chapo and. They have the same problem with, like in Sweden, we have these mafias, we have these uh, gangs. They're just, you know, they're all they're doing is just selling cocaine and weed, and then they're making a shit ton of money. Yeah. And they want to protect this money. They want to protect their income, like all corporations do. They lobby by shooting some bombs. Exactly. And the whole 
thing that the political side, which was the second aspect that you was talking about, is that they can regulate this market by legalizing the market. I see that that is the only way I see it, as we're going to see an end to this conflict. You have to cut funding. You have to be. You have to cut funding for the corporations, so they don't have money for guns. Because guns aren't cheap. Ammunition isn't cheap. Palms are not cheap. <coughs> but they have such a high income yeah. that they have the money to buy these resources. And but if we cut their, you know, cut their feet off, if you cut their income, they will not have the money to continue these uh, attacks. That, that is true. Terrorizing society and such. Yeah. No, that is true. I mean, like, they, they did the study on the, the revenue the entire Stockholm has on drugs. Yeah. So what they did was they uh, they measured the urine, yeah. like, every day yeah. for a month yeah. in Stockholm. Uh, they, they got that entire Stockholm use per day. I think it was per day. Yeah, yeah, per day. They used 30 million crowns of product. Yeah. And that's cocaine, ecstasy, marijuana. You know, you got all kinds of drugs, yeah, right? Yeah. So if you have a market that's thirty million crowns a day, this is just one city in in, in, in Europe, right. which is not even a big city. Right, in Europe. right, right. Imagine how much Berlin. Whoa, London, man, France, la- shit. Paris. It's Whoa. gotta be crazy. Yeah. That's that's massive. Yeah. The the thing is like the the this. Criminal organizations, you know, in, in the time of Pablo Escobar uh, yeah. and, and, and Chapo, yeah. they had like massive problems with money laundering. They were yeah. g- getting this all of this cash on the ground, like yeah. millions of billions of dollars. Yeah. And I also read that 10% of their annual revenue was, was eaten by rats. Like that's Pablo the ca- Escobar's? Yeah, yeah, Pablo Escobar's yeah. money, right? Even today, they found some kind of cash yeah. on the ground. I just want to say, imagine being a farmer. Yeah. You're making no money. You're making no money. And then all of a sudden, you start digging and you see like a million dollars that's like been Whoa. rotten. It's been in your land oh. since Escobar. Oh. You've been like, wow. <clears throat> but do you even dare to keep it? Because what if he has a guy that's still looking for this? Shit? What kind of cartel was he with? Do you Escobar, remember that? Escobar was in the Medellin cartel. He, start, Medellin he cartel? started like, the Medellin cartel right. from the city of Medellin. And he was against. They're still going. They, yeah, they're still going. True, yeah. true. No, but like so, they still have not cut the funding. For of course, that's there the thing. You demand. can you can keep take you can keep taking out of the CEO of a company, but if the company's still making money, they're gonna hire a new CEO. True, that's the thing. That and as you, uh, as you were saying, if if you give back to the people, yeah. you're gonna be seen as like Batman. Yeah. of and the society. Is, speaking of Pablo Escobar, that is exactly what he has done. Hit the city of Medellin, where he's from. He funneled a lot of the money back into the community there, and investing in schools, investing in churches. Yeah, yeah, churches, food for the people. He was having cookouts, you know, inviting everybody. The people of Medellin, they love Pablo Escobar. They yeah. have they have statues to Pablo Escobar, and because in their view, he's a good guy. They're taking money from the gringos, the American, True. the Americans that's been uh, trying to fuck Colombia, and funneling it back into the system. Pablo Escobar, he reincorporated. A lot of the money into his old neighborhood. You know, he had, like you said, almost like like a Batman vibe, yeah. Robin Hood vibe. Definitely. Um, you don't see that anymore. You don't see uh, these criminal organizations reinvesting into the community anymore. Uh, like a lot of these people, uh, you know, they sell cocaine, they sell uh, ecstasy, marijuana, ruins uh, communities, ruins everything. But they don't reinvest any of the money. They just launder the money uh, and then take it with them or take it with the gang or do something like that. True. Uh, Speaking of laundering money, they just caught uh, the biggest money laundering operation in Swedish history. In Swedish history? Yeah. This uh, is interesting. Yeah, a couple of, uh, couple of days ago. Uh, they call it Operation uh, Casino. Another cool name. Another James Bond, the Operation of wow. Casino. No, uh, it was 108 people indicted, which is a, a record-setting number wow. of people. Uh, 108 people that was convicted of uh, money laundering. The whole gist w- of it was uh, a person gets told by another person to take out a loan. 
right. like half a million crowns in loans. Like whatever bank you want? Whatever bank. Just take out a loan, 500000 Okay. They transfer the money to this guy, right. the guy that told them to get the loan. This guy goes to Monaco or uh, another place that has casinos that's friendly to them. They take the cash to the casino, buys chips, then doesn't even gamble at the casino, just transfer the chips back into cash. All of a sudden, it's white money. Zero percent lost. That's so simple and smart. It's so simple. Um, but what uh, so person A, the one that took out the loan, then goes to the bank and says, uh, my, I- my identity has been jacked. Someone has taken out this loan uh, in my name. So a couple of years ago, the banks were just been like, oh, okay, don't worry about it. We'll get, you, know, you don't have to pay it back. We'll, we'll, we'll write it off. But there's been so mon- many of these frauds happening that the banks are like, no, you know, you're gonna have to pay it back now. They've they've what? they've uh, strengthened their um, checks, and so it all started with this one guy got arrested in uh, Landvetter Airport in Sweden with fifty thousand euros cash, Whoa. heading to Monaco. He was associated with the Uppsala mafia uh, or Uppsala gang. He got caught. They started looking into his finances, looking into where he was going, how, how, what's been happening. And they found out that 50 million Swedish crowns had been uh, laundered Whoa. through this uh, network. Whoa. 50 uh, million 50 crowns. 50 million Swedish crowns. So they, all they was doing is they was flying cash to Monaco, transferring it. and then This take, is some Wolf of Wall Street shit. Yeah, taking it out and then just transfer it to your account Wow. online. Because all of a sudden it's white money. Because you yeah. won it, you won it somewhere, and so what happened was 108 people was indicted, uh, convicted. Uh, the top guy, uh, he got eight years. That's it. That's it. He got eight years, and then uh, everyone else got maybe a couple of years or probation, heavy fines, something yeah. like that. Uh, but 108 people was indicted in the biggest money laundering scheme, and I think that's a large portion of where the gang's income goes to. Yeah. So it's a new market opening up. Yeah. I mean, you can trade online. You can buy stuff. You can yeah. rate people. You yeah. can rate drug dealers. Just like Amazon or eBay or exactly. any, any of your uh, online retailers because you have uh, ratings, you have reviews, you have everything from speed, how fast was the package yeah. sent, how many times has he done deals, how many, you know. It's drug trade of the future. It is. And... It's no longer cash that was bad for Pablo Escobar. You're paying them in stocks. Yeah. You're paying them in a stock that's going up. Every time I think about it, um, it's very hard to, to find like a one-way solution to this no. problem, right? No. So I can, I can only imagine the the amount of problem the cops and, and politicians have yeah. on the this mass scale. Yeah, but I feel like the the feeling I get from politicians is nobody really wants to talk about it. Yeah, because you the, can o- the only the only party that wants to talk about it is the Nazis. Yeah, and they're like, hey, we're gonna send in the army. We're gonna the army is not gonna do anything. It's all online. They're, they're not gonna stop it. You're just gonna not do it while the army is there. And then when the army leaves, you're right back at it. It's like Al Capone. They didn't stop Al Capone. They changed the laws that cut the funding from Al Capone, and that's how you stop them. That's the only way to stop them is regulating it, do some kind of a system blog type thing for international viewers. That's uh, where with alcohol in Sweden is regulated through a monopoly that the government has, that they sell alcohol. Um, nobody else is allowed to sell uh, hard alcohol uh, except bars. And clubs, <coughs> and then they have like massive tax on that. So massive they make taxes, a lot of money and on it's them. closed on Sundays, yeah. and it's shitty opening hours. Ain't nobody getting a bottle of vodka at three o'clock in the morning no. in Sweden. You better <coughs> call Al Capone in that case. And I feel like if nobody wants to legalize hard drugs. Nobody wants to do it. But what are we dealing with here? We are dealing with bombs going off every week, shootings every day, and and that's happening every day. There is a shooting in Sweden. That was not like that in 2002. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. And this is in, uh, around the world. Right? Around, around the world. Yeah. 
but around the world you have like different problems. If we, like if you just look at Sweden, it was a very quiet country. Yeah. It was a very peaceful country. True. Uh, it used to be national news when there was a shooting. You know, it used to be everywhere. No, there was shootings every day. Well, what happened? I was shooting. I was, was there a gunshot? <coughs> Definitely was a gunshot. People are getting killed. 15-year-olds are getting killed. Yeah. They had uh, last summer. There was a, or was it even summer? It was probably in the last autumn. Uh, Carolina Hakim, it was a Swedish doctor married to a criminal, got shot. shot. They got the wrong person. Uh, or you have Nadella Jack, 18-year-old, also Swedish. Uh, same week, they got the wrong person. Wow. They shot him. They're shooting civilians out there. Wow. Uh, and then you have uh, a 15-year-old uh, that got shot uh, back in winter couple of months ago was a pizzeria Pizza shot outside a pizzeria yeah. you got him him and his friend 15 and 16 year old they got shot right outside gun what down. can you possibly have done to deserve to get shot at the age of 15 you was probably selling drugs in your community right you right. were you were trying to take over from somebody else or you talked shit or you did you did uh, <clears throat> i don't know what happened maybe he was a civilian casualty yeah. it's wrong either way of, of what happened of course but the only reason this happens is because the other person has such a big income that he has afford he affords an AK forty seven. Yeah. He affords the mags and those aren't cheap. AK forty seven costs maybe fifty thousand, sixty thousand crowns. Damn. And that's without the ammo. Damn. You're gonna get the ammo on top of that. And if you have that kind of cash flow, you're doing something illegal. Yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah. Wow man, this this uh this episode has been uh, up and down, but it has been really exciting because yeah. uh, crime is uh, on the horizon, like it's always been. Yeah. So w- let's give the politicians that are listening to Sunday Stories yeah. some advice, okay? Yeah. So from, from you, the diver, Benjamin, what would your advice be? What should we do? <clears throat> well, my first advice would be to listen to the community. Look at the laws that we have instead of just making it like now they want to have like a lot of discussions are like, oh, we're going to make it uh, tougher laws on gun. Uh, if you have a gun, you're going to get a ma- harder sentence or b- if you get caught with drugs, you're going to get a harder sentence. You're going to get. Uh, but that is not going to stop it. If you look at America, you have you get caught with a gun, you get a five year minimum. Uh, you get caught with a kilo of cocaine. You get a life life in prison. Look, United States, they've, they've gone to the wall with this, oh, oh we're going to be tough on them. We're going to be tough on them. They have the biggest criminal population in the world. Yeah. Three million Americans are sitting in jail Whoa. because of long-term sentences that they, the politicians have been like, oh, this is going to crack down on crime. They haven't cracked down on crime. They have a large cocaine epidemic. They have an opioid epidemic. Yeah. Shit. They've just started to legalize weed. Oh, look at it. Oh, Colorado has the lowest crime rate. Oh, they have... Because that's how you solve it. <clears throat> you cut the funding from the gangs. You cut off their supply of weapons. You cut off their ability to commit these attacks. So to politicians, I would look into what can we do to make it more regulated? What can we do to stop the influx of drugs? If you can't stop it, if they have it. And nobody wants to say that the system blog is going to start selling drugs but what's the other options we have shootings every day we have civilians getting shot down we have bombs everywhere and it's not going to stop more people are using drugs than ever before and more kids are being brought up on more criminal activities and more glorifications of criminal activities that it's not going to stop you have to either legalize and regulate heavily tax that shit and when you have it in the bud then you maybe try to phase it out. True. You try to, when you have it regulated, when you have it checked up on, because if you regulate it, no one's going to get it. You know, kids are not going to get it. You're going to have a lower crime rate. You're going to have a lower, you know, uh, poverty is going to go down because you can't, if you regulate, you can't buy enough. You can't, you know, you can't, drug dealers have no moral ambiguity. They will sell to a five year old, they will sell to a 10 year old. System blogging will not sell to a 10 year old. And because it's regulated, and uh, I think that's going that would be my step forward. I know nobody wants the only thing we're talking about is harder sentences. Oh, gotta crack down, gotta crack down. It doesn't work. 
United States, they went crazy cracking it down. They went so hard on the crackdown, and now they're suffering. They have the biggest population of inmates in the world that just committed, like, you get caught with a couple of drugs. You get caught with a gun. You get caught. You make a mistake. That's not, that's not supposed to end your life. It's supposed to make you change your ways and then come out of it a better person. But if you crack down on people that's obviously already cracked down because if you get caught with a gun, you get caught with drugs, your life's not going too well. You don't need a heavy sentence to give you that. You need someone to help you. You need someone to show you the way forward. And harder sentences will not do that. That's, that's true. A, that's true. That's, a, that's, a, that's a very, very good sum up. Yeah. Um, well, guys, you heard a man. Thank you guys for listening to Sunday Stories with me, your host, Farim Shinzade. And as always, I had the diver, Benjamin Fazic. Thank you guys for listening. And I'll see you, maybe with Benjamin, in the next episode of Sunday Stories. Mm-hmm.